what's going on? Let's start with the present here, and you can, you know, whatever you want to uh, sprinkle in from what you heard over the weekend and leading up to that, uh, into what is going on with Deshaun Watson, the Dolphins, and Texans as we're currently conversing on this Tuesday. Yeah, well, I, look, I can tell you right now, the the Houston Texans are, are going to have to relent on pick protections when it comes to Deshaun Watson. And, you know, the I, I understand Dolphins fans, um, want to look at this situation and say, well, you know, look, we're going into the season with Tua, which is significant, and the Houston Texans are going to go into the season, you know, at, at least at this point, this is the plan to go into the season with Deshaun Watson on the 53-man roster. But the reality is why we're sitting here talking about that is simply because the Houston Texans are refusing to look at an exchange of, of draft picks for Deshaun Watson and, and give protections away. And – it's something that caused, I think, the Carolina Panthers over a period of time to say there's there's too much risk there, and if we cannot mitigate the risk, we have to clap our hands and, and walk away from the table. Um, I think it kept uh, the Philadelphia Eagles at an, at an arm's length for a while and, and really kept them from engaging more deeply into a Deshaun Watson pursuit than they ever did. And also for the Denver Broncos, who I, you know, I think genuinely were and – you know, would probably still be interested in Deshaun Watson if the Houston Texans were willing to say, look, we don't have to have everything. We don't have to have our price. And then on top of it, also have pick protections as well. Now, you know, the Dolphins, and and I'm going to just, look, I'll just say it, Brian Flores. Brian Flores really respects the football talent. And I'm going to say again, the football talent of of Deshaun Watson. Okay, we can, you have to separate, um, you know, for a moment when you're talking about potential deal, you have to separate how he's viewed from a football perspective, you know, versus how he's viewed in terms of the the civil litigation and the criminal investigations that are underway. From a football perspective, Brian Flores looks at Deshaun Watson as a, a top five quarterback, a um, a player who will push to be you know a, a first or second team All Pro player every single year at the position for the next ten years. Everything that he was cracked up to be and that everyone celebrated prior to March, prior to everything coming out from the civil and, and criminal end of of you know his life right now. Um, but that said, there is the other half of the equation, and that is um, the reticence that teams experience, even if they like him, even if they're still at the table willing to entertain trading for him, um, it's being protected for what happens after that trade occurs. And if the Texans are going to sit here, which is what is occurring right now, the Texans are going to sit here and continue to say we're not we're not giving up pick protections and we're, we're going to continue to push for this full price, which – once again, three first-round picks, two second-round picks, that is what they consider a full-price offer. Um, it's going to be hard to, to consummate a deal, but the idea that just because the season's starting, that this is wrapped, it's a wrap, and, and Miami's out for good. Again, Brian Flores had the opportunity, and I can't underscore this enough, very smart guy. My report came out on Friday. He had a whole day to think about it, knowing the questions were coming. Had the opportunity to go, we have our starting quarterback, not going to take these questions anymore. We're done. Um, we're moving forward. We, we're not trading for any starting quarterback, so let's just get off of this, and, and that's it. We're finished. Didn't happen. And I know, you know, people are going to say that's not proof of anything, but I've covered the league 20 years. Rich, you've been around it forever. I mean, we've, we've seen this happen before, and there is an economy of language that, that matters, and coaches, and Flores is a very bright guy, could end this any moment he wants to. Well, let's that you just laid a lot out there, Charles. So let me let me just get right into it then. Um, sure. Totally makes sense that the Texans want Watson gone. Totally makes sense that Watson still wants out. Totally makes sense that Watson wants to control where he wants to go. Totally makes sense that the Texans are like, yeah, we're not going to give you any protection. This is Deshaun Watson, and totally right. makes sense that the Dolphins would want protection because of what's going on and what they don't know. And let's be honest, there's, <clears throat> I'll say it, a lot in South Florida where individuals could be called massage therapists. I mean, so there's there's a lot of risk and moving parts in everything right here. But on what planet does everybody think this sort of thing is going to be pulled off where everybody gets what they want a week and a half before the season. Why even attempt it? Why even attempt it from let's remove the Texans side because they want him off. 
Right. Why would the Dolphins even attempt it? Why would they even attempt it, Charles? I I'm, I can't sit here and defend the, the thought process of um, why. Look, I, I've written in the past, I've written multiple times since March that essentially we're in a radioactive situation with a player where from a risk standpoint, from a public relations standpoint, from – if you even want to go there and, you know, look, again, innocent until proven, proven guilty. He's being looked at by everyone right now, okay? So it's not like it's just one body and, you know, um, this is a situation where someone could do a sloppy investigation and, and nothing happens. Um, this is the FBI. This is the Harris County Prosecutor's Office, Houston Police Department, the NFL, which will eventually conclude their investigation after uh, the criminal side wraps up. Um you know, it's there's a, there's a morality risk here too, depending on how you feel about the allegations and you know what your level of belief is and and you know what bears out um, once all these investigations are completed. I can't answer to why you would want to even entertain that element of risk. Now that said, um, I can't speak to the personal relationship maybe in the past or you know the connections between you know, Brian Flores and people around um, Deshaun Watson, what he knows about the kid personally. Um, I, when I went through my training camp tour, went through Philadelphia, went through Carolina, went through Denver, you know, um, a multitude of other teams. They all know I live in Houston. They all ask about Deshaun Watson, like what's going on there. And the first question I'd ask them is, did did any, you have an inkling of this? Like when he's coming out of Clemson, you do all your work, like anything, nothing, nothing, nothing. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here. 